FDM 3D printing is an additive manufacturing process that iteratively extrudes subsequent layers of molten thermoplastics to build a part. FDM 3D printing gives designers the flexibility to print parts that are hollow or have variable densities. Parts can be printed with an internal structure known as infill and can be modified using different geometries and densities. Simply put, the denser the infill and the more rasters that the infill pattern has, the stronger and more impact resistant the final print will be. With the help of Insight and GrabCAD, we can add contours to the part which will thicken its walls and will help resist any plastic deformation caused by impact or excessive mechanical loading. In order to illustrate this concept, we devised a practical experiment where we printed several iterations of a hockey puck with different infill densities, infill geometries, and contours. We then proceeded to take a slap shot against a brick wall so we can visualize how well they are able to resist plastic deformation. The first puck was printed with a sparse infill at 22% density and had two contours. The second puck was printed with a sparse infill with a 22% density but had five contours. The third was printed with a sparse double dense infill and two contours. The last puck was printed with a solid infill and two contours. Without further ado, let's take some shots and see how well they hold up. Alright, let's take a look at how well they held up. First, we'll look at the ABS parts. In the top image from left to right, the pucks are lined up as sparse with two contours, sparse with five contours, sparse double dense with two contours, and solid. As we can see, both the sparse filled pucks suffered considerable damage, whereas the sparse double dense puck just got dented and the solid pucks had only surface damage. We should also note that the sparse filled puck with five contours has slightly less damage than the sparse filled puck with two contours. This helps us visualize how the increased number of contours and the increased infill density improves the overall resistance to plastic deformation when a large impact load is applied to the part. As we all can understand, this test was far from ideal conditions, as the amount of force applied to the puck and the angle the puck hits the wall will vary from test to test. In order to have a more conclusive result, we decided to run the experiment again using the same print profiles as the ABS parts, but this time we decided to use the Altum material. As you can see, the results from the Altum parts were very similar to that of the ABS parts. The two sparse parts failed, the double dense parts dented, and the solid part only had surface scratches. With these two repeated results, we can understand that the infill geometry and density is directly correlated to the part's ability to withstand plastic deformation when an impact load is applied. In order to better visualize what's actually happening inside the part, we peeled back the top layers of the broken sparse filled parts. We can see that the rasters inside the part deformed at the location of the impact. If we were to have more rasters or a stronger raster in pattern, we would likely have a greater resistance to the plastic deformation of each roster when the same loading conditions are applied. Hopefully this simple yet effective experiment helps you better understand infill properties and how you can better set up your prints so that they're able to withstand their applications loading conditions.